Ashley from Recording King here. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really want to welcome you to the RK family. We're here every single week live streaming with some awesome folks. So please click that subscribe button and stay tuned. It's the best way to stay in the loop about what we have going on. I'm really excited to have today's guest with us. Uh, someone who I first met online. We had never in fact actually met face to face uh, until clicking in for this meeting just a few minutes ago. But over the time that I've known him, I've definitely watched him grow a huge audience uh, on, on Facebook and on YouTube to his unbelievable playing. He also modifies his guitars in some crazy ways that draw a lot of attention. Uh, certainly he's become my online friend and I would say now he is my real friend a big part of the Recording King family and one half of the admin group for the Recording King Facebook group. Uh, I'm here today and very excited to introduce you from Sweden, Patrick S. Lundgren. Patrick, great to have you. Hello, man. How are you? I'm fine, man. How are you? I am great. I am great. We, we of course, want to start out with your playing. So can you start us out with the song? Tell us a little bit about what you're going to play and then let it rip. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna, I can try a bit of uh, Fiddler's Dram, Norman Blake kind of style. That's awesome, man. Thank you so much. It sounds great. Thanks, man. It's the guitar, man. It plays ah. itself. Well, the player definitely has something to do with it, my friend. <laughs> yeah. So tell me this. What is your first memory of the guitar? Well, let's see if I can pronounce his name in, in uh, English. So it's uh, Björn Rosenström. Björn Rosenström, okay? Okay. And he's like uh, Roger Allen Wade, maybe, you know, a little funny lyric kind of guy. So when I first heard him play and I was like hooked on the guitar sound. So how long ago and I was, was I think I was 12, maybe. Did you start then, playing right then or did you have to wait to get a guitar? Uh, I think I was 13 when I got my first guitar, a nylon string guitar. Uh, and and then I uh, wished for Christmas for another one when I was I think fourteen, and then I got another nylon guitar and I remember I was pissed because <laughs> I wanted a steel string guitar. <laughs> <laughs> so Sweden, I would say I could be wrong about this, and please correct me if I am. But I, I don't know if it's the world's hotbed for bluegrass necessarily. How did you come across bluegrass in Sweden, and, and what was it like being? What's it like being a bluegrass musician in Sweden? Well, uh, I remember when I was in school, like maybe 15 years old or something, I saw the movie in school, the Oh Brother Where Aren't Thou. And then I heard the music and I really liked it. So I heard, had to search what kind of music it was and I found out it's called bluegrass. And then I went to online and searched for bluegrass guitar on YouTube. And then I found Tony Rice playing Salt Creek and you know, I had to learn it and I learned it right away. So I was hooked. I don't know too much about Sweden as far as the music scene is concerned. What Describe to me, like, what opportunities do people have to play? Do they have a pretty strong infrastructure? Obviously, it's a little bit on hold now because of the virus, of course. But is there are there a lot of places to play? Is it a really active music scene where you are? Or describe it a little bit, if you would. I wouldn't say personally that it's an active scene here. We have, like, Bluegrass Festival. I don't know how many, you know, but four or five, six, maybe. Uh, the biggest one, actually, I, th I think it's one of the biggest. It's actually 10 minutes from my house. Uh, so that's kind of close. But, you know, this year ain't the music festival year, as you know. Uh, so I, I don't think you, you, you don't play a lot of bluegrass in the pubs here. You know? So it's not, we don't have any station in. And so. <laughs> what, what kind of music would you say is most popular locally? 
I mean, obviously, there's some amazing, amazing musicians from Sweden, of course. Oh, that's a hard question. You know, people here like rock, metal stuff. I think that's the most popular, not bluegrass. A lot of people I met at parties and stuff, they never heard of bluegrass. So, But w when I play it, they seem to enjoy it. It's a happy music with uh, sad lyrics. Yeah, that's true. That's a great way to describe it. You're absolutely yeah. right. So we'll probably never see an electric guitar in your hands. Probably no, uh, no tapping or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, that's not for me, man. I don't have any, anything against it, but it's not my taste. One of the things that really impressed me about your lessons is how well you break down some of those like super complex runs of other musicians. And so I'm really curious to know like a little bit how, when you're first hearing a song, what, what's your process? How do you figure out those really intricate lines and, and then how do you teach them to people in such an effective way? Yeah, uh, I would say I was blessed with a good ear, right? I don't know if I had it in my hands right away, but I, if I can hear it, I can play it. That, that's the best way to describe it. Uh, I can listen to a CD and pick it out, but I watch some videos now when you have YouTube that's make it more easy when you see the fingers, you know, oh, he play a C in, you know, with a capo. So, but if, if I can hear it, I can play it. I know also a lot of bluegrass is based on jamming with other people. Have you found other people around you that you're interested in jamming with, or do you mostly connect with people online for jams? I know that you have connected with JP. I definitely want to hear more about that as well. Yeah. Well, uh, when I lived in Stockholm, uh, I played once a week with a bunch of friends in the old town Stockholm. Uh, so it wasn't like an open jam in a bar, you know? Uh, so I met a lot of people there. So I could jam every week. So. But now when I live here, I don't jam as often. And I'm really glad I have YouTube and Facebook. And, you know, it feels like I'm connecting with people in real life sometimes, like with you right now. <laughs> so how did you, how far are you from Stockholm? And how did that move take place? And, and what, what's the situation like now as far as you getting back there to jam? Or do you not get a chance to? Uh, let's see. I moved from Stockholm like four years ago because I met my my wife uh, so I actually met my wife the first time in 2016 uh, at the cruising with cars and stuff uh, and then I met her again and you know we clicked the first time we clicked the other time and here I am owning a house having a baby a wife congratulations um, yeah thank you man so how far are you from Stockholm? And describe uh, me exactly where you are in Sweden. Uh, you could say I'm in the middle, maybe. And it's maybe two and a half hour to Stockholm for me. So a weekend so it's not trip, very far. Not a, not a night trip. You'd never, you wouldn't run up there for the night. I could, but not now when I have a kid, you know. Yep, yep. How, how old is your, is your child? She is almost seven seven months are you getting yeah. a lot of sleep one more time are you getting a lot of sleep or no yeah well i get a kind of good sleep but my wife doesn't <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah how has that affected your practice time well a lot actually i can't just you know take the guitar and play whenever i want that's not gonna happen anymore but uh, my, my wife is very good let's say that so i get to play more than other men with babies i think <laughs> <laughs> well so what's the weather like where you are is it does it go from cold to hot in the winter and summer or do you yeah it's yeah. like it, it's like a lightning switch you know when it's the first of september it's cold and so what are we talking about like 30 30 you guys are on celsius uh, we are degrees uh-huh. And yeah, so it's how like cold does it get? I don't know now, man. Uh, maybe now it's ten degrees, maybe. I, I have no idea. It could be five. I haven't been outside, so <laughs> but in the winter it will get below zero, I would imagine. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. And you guys get lots of snow as well? Yeah, we do. Not last year, not a lot, but sometimes it's crazy amount of snow, so 
where do you get the inspiration for the songs that you're picking for your lessons? Well, I search on YouTube for a song that I don't think exists as a lesson. And I want to do lessons that don't exist on YouTube. But I also want to do my variation of popular song, like, you know, Whiskey Before Breakfast. There's a lot, tons of lessons, but I want to do it maybe my way, my own way, or someone else arrangement. Like, people want to play specific uh, arrangement of Tone Rise. And then I'm going to break it down, play it, upload it, and, you know, it's free. So all those videos that you post, are those the first take or do you have to try them a number of times before you get it done? Oh, oh man, sometimes I can do one take in five videos and sometimes I need to do like 100 takes. So it's <laughs> not only one take. <laughs> do you edit it afterwards or is it just pretty much from start to finish you have to get it right? Yeah, it's pretty much start to finish. I mean, that's sometimes the, I, that's a test of whether you can do it or not. You know what I mean? If you yeah, do, yeah. If you've got mistakes. That's yeah, awesome. so, sometimes sometimes I edit to do you know I play slow first the lesson and then I do another video and I use iMovie and I put them together but that's not a lot of editing so. Mm -hmm. Well, so would you mind playing something else for us? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, give me one sec. I'm gonna bring the guitar. Oh sure. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's uh ROT16, yes. Yeah, this is the, the RD, uh, RD. this is the RD, yeah. yeah it's yeah. the popular one, you know. Yeah, it looks like it's got some miles on it. <laughs> yeah, it that's it looks like it. <laughs> so what yeah. are you gonna play? Let's see, I can play some um, black mountain rag perhaps. That's so awesome, man. Now, I know that guitar, it looks like it has a lot of miles on it. And I know many of those miles are earned, but some of them you kind of did yourself. Can you tell me a little bit about what, what kind of aging you've done to your guitars and what kind of mods you do to them? Absolutely. I actually did a lot of things to this, this guitar. So first, I took all the finish off. I sand by hand and it took me like 16 hours, man. I didn't have any machine. It took so long because poly finish is super hard mm -hmm. and that and if you have a, a poly finish you will never have a crack in your guitar <laughs> but uh, I would, sure. yeah so i sent it down took me like 16 hours i believe um i have also and then after i took took it off i applied some amber tone uh, nitro finish uh, so it's kind of yellowish Mm -hmm. make the the yeah make it look more vintage uh do you re really want to know how i did the scratch <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, I actually took a took a knife and you know uh, i also i changed the pick guard this is i believe a graven pick guard mm -hmm. and i did a cut through with a knife on the saddle mm -hmm. Oh, that I see was cut. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, and I know a lot of people don't understand what a cut through is. You know, it drops in saddle. You just put it in like that. You drop it in. A cut through it. It's longer, and you can slide it in from the side. Why and that you makes the. Uh, well, I did it actually for the look because I like the vintage kind of style, and all the all of them had you know, uh, cut through saddle. Uh, but some people think it helps the tone because it has more bone to vibrate on and gives more sound. And whether it's not that is true, I don't know, man, because some people think you can change the bridge, 
bridge pin and you have a new guitar. If you think so, maybe you think it sounds better. I don't know if it's really true. I can't hear it. It's I mean, not like most, night and day. The most important thing is that you want to play it, right? You have to get it set exactly. up the way you want so that you, you really want to want to play it when you can. Exactly. Uh, I also, what else did I do? I, I did the, it's hard to see now, but it's more like a matte finish on the tuners as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, okay, but it's no logo here, but I'm gonna fix it here in the back. I'm gonna make it, you know, a print oh, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the goal, but I need the right tools to do mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Uh, what else did I do? I don't know if I, yeah, of course, I enlarged the sound hole. It's big. Yeah, so tell me about that. How did you do that? Did you have like a pattern that you were going off of or, or what? No, man, I just used to Dremel. Yeah, like that. You're I done a it. Brave man, you're very <laughs> <Yeah>. brave. <laughs> I've done it a lot of times. The first guitar I tried it on was the RD 316 I had uh, seven years ago, maybe or six. That was the first guitar, and you know, I like to do modifications to see what I can do to guitar. Will it change the sound? And do you and think lot... the sound hole did change the sound? Well. I can tell you this because a lot of people is wondering about this. This enlarge the sound hole, it's not gonna make your guitar sound better. I promise you that. It doesn't gonna make your guitar sound bad either. I did it strictly for the look, tonerized style. That's, you know, that's the case. You might be lacking a bit of the bass, but nothing else really. And a lot of people think, you know, oh, I have a good bass sound on the guitar, you know. But, you know, you can hear from cheap guitars uh, and expensive guitars. Uh, uh, expensive guitars always sound good on the high note. They ring out, and so does my recording kings anyway, as well, so. So where do you do all of those modifications? Do you have a workshop where you do it? Or like, do you have a whole compendium of tools where you can do that? Or, or tell me about that. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> the kitchen table. <laughs> oh, it's the yeah. perfect spot. Yeah, that's where I did this one. But I didn't spray it on the kitchen table with a night room. But <laughs> yeah, that's the place. So when yeah. you go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, you go. When you're picking up a guitar, what's attracting you to it? Like, what are you, I, it's obvious that the look of it is something that obviously you really have to gravitate to, but what are you, what are you looking for? The weight? Do you look for a certain type of neck feel or like what, what is attracting you to a certain guitar? Well, that has changed over the years. First, I really like the, the slim neck, you know, small and comfortable and stuff. But nowadays I would say I like a V-neck hard v-neck and fat v-neck i like that but i also like the slight v mm -hmm. uh, the v is important nowadays because i really like it um and i would say a lightweight guitar to me feels like a good built guitar mm -hmm. but if you have a rosewood guitar you can't have it very light because rosewood is more heavy than a mahogany guitar so yeah, some some old ones that I've played are just light as a feather, but you can feel in your body they're like so resonant when you're when you're holding on to them. Certainly, yeah. weight is a factor for me. What gauge strings are you using on your dreads? Uh, thirteen always. Thirteen always. always. Yeah, thirteen fifty six. Do you have a specific uh, brand that you use? Yeah, Elixir, always. You know, I, but I have tried. So so many strings you won't believe it. every strings on from strings and beyond the ve website i've tried every brand i think and you know it's a lot of strings that sounds really good but for five minutes and elixirs you know they sounds good all the time how often do you have to change them the elixir maybe it depends on how much i play sometimes i play you know every day and sometimes i haven't played in a week so but three months with elixir maybe Mm -hmm. I would and one day with every other brand. <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you like a super sweaty player? Do you? Yeah, I think I am, but I don't know if I am in general, but it feels to me like I am. 
it definitely corrodes the strings. At least for me, I know when I'm sweating on them, then I'm like, ooh, I got to change these ASAP for sure. Yeah, exactly. And and uh, I don't like the you know the squeezy noise with other strings. Elixir <laughs> doesn't have that, so I, I'm corroded, not fond right? of that. Yeah, exactly. And they have a pattern on the coding, so no other string can use that particular coding. I think for every, on the testing that we have actually done on Adirondack tops, we found that that 13 gauge, which I guess is a technically it's a medium maybe, it's yeah. it really drives that Adirondack top way, way harder than just a lighter gauge. Although it's not quite as easy to play, it's really, really powerful on those thicker, thicker tops. Yeah. Not, not that the tops are thick, they are stiffer is what I mean to say. Not thick yeah, tops, stiff, stiff 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 they're yes. stiff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, Jim is feeding me a couple questions here from some of the people who are watching. What elixirs are they? Nanoweb uh, or which ones? They are phosphor. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Not not the eighty twenty ones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I I don't know why I like them, but you know, they, is they last. That's why mm -hmm. I like sound of other strings as well, but I don't like li like how they last. Well, because of all of your lessons, I know that you get a ton of random questions from people, not just about the instruments that you're playing, but tons of random questions. What are some of the questions you get asked the most? Oh, man, I, I the most, I don't know, but I have some kind of questions they ask me or more like, you know, can you come over to US and play on my festival and stuff? <laughs> You get that a lot, huh? That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, I have got that a lot, actually. Dude, we would love to have you. We would love to have yeah. you. <laughs> and someday I'm going to be there. We'll make it I happen. I promise you that. Some way. So, we'll so that happen. is actually a lot of people who write to me. They say, can you come over and play at my festival? And some people have the, a festival in the garden, like private parties and stuff. So That's awesome. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll keep a spot in the jam open for you whenever you make it over here. We'll keep a yeah. spot open for you. Absolutely. So I know your YouTube channel just hit 10,000 subscribers, which is seriously amazing. Tell me Thank about you, what, that, what that felt like and what you're going to do next with it. Well, I have, I have had my account since like 2007, but I haven't uploaded, you know, just to listen to music. So, but uh, it's, it's a big thing for me. If you don't have a YouTube account and, and stuff, you wouldn't understand, but it's a really big, big thing to me. And it's a huge milestone with a 10K. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, 10,000 is a lot, dude. It is a lot. Yeah. Uh, and um, my plans would be get uh, good recording equipment and fix my music room in my house and make a really nice video. Have you seen Banjo Band? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, his settings, he got a, like the hillbilly stuff. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That, that, that's my goal. That kind of setting. So what are you recording through now? Well, <laughs> I just used uh, uh, this one that comes with the iPhone 11. Mm -hmm. It certainly Nothing doesn't else. look like that's, your, your viewers are not having any issues with that, it seems. It's definitely that, uh, that's good. <laughs> I wish I had some better recording equipment, but I'm gonna get some. So, is it pretty easy to find instruments in Sweden, or is it difficult? Like instruments, recording gear, etc. Is that stuff pretty readily available, or is it hard to find? Yeah, in Stockholm you have a lot of choices, but not where I live. But in Stockholm they have quite a lot. Do you guys have Toman to order online, or what's your yeah. main online source? Yeah, man, that's the the main main site actually that's awesome well hey i would love to hear you have some new recording gear but i am certainly satisfied with how your songs sound now it sounds amazing to me for sure and ten thousand people can't be wrong right no no you're right about that man well so uh I, a lot of people watching i am sure are curious to find out about the giveaway that we're announcing today yeah. so I'd love to get you to play one more song uh, i want to talk a little bit about the giveaway uh, we've partnered up with Patrick to give away one of the Series 11 guitars, and I know he has one similar to the one we're giving away right here. If you wouldn't mind grabbing that and showing it off a little bit, that would be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I want to say that I just got this one today. It still has the plastic on the pig guard, but yeah, me. yeah, I saved that for you because <laughs> everyone who gets a new guitar know how satisfying this is. So I'm gonna yeah, do it. You're gonna do it right now. You. Yep. Oh, amazing. Are you ready? Ready. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Now it's yours. Now it's yours. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> So this guitar is, I haven't played it a lot, but uh, it's light strings. So mm -hmm. I'm used to, you know, medium. Yep. Super but it's, weight also, it's a matte finish. So it's like, yeah, it's kind of called an open pour finish. So if you can feel on the neck, it the neck feels super duper soft and smooth. Yeah. Definitely all solid. So I know you're a fan of that. Solid spruce yep. top, solid mahogany back and sides. Uh, this one comes with a Fishman pickup as well, so uh, we're really excited to have that as a stock item on this guitar for sure. Hopefully you'll get a yeah. chance to use it at some point. Yeah, man. And it, it has the spruce top and solid mahogany back and side. This is really pretty. It's hard to see maybe on the video. Uh, looks pretty good it, to me. Yeah, it's stunning. And I actually love this shape of the headstock. It's like the old school vintage. Yeah, guitars. me too. I think that's my favorite of all of the ones we do for sure. It's yeah. Great. And now you need to do this with a rosewood veneer on the head. Ah. <laughs> yes. I suggest that to my brother. That's a great idea. That is yeah. Yeah. So if you want to win this guitar, you can definitely drop down to the description. You'll see a link in the description to enter. You can enter there and we will be announcing the winner next Friday's live stream. So you've got a week to enter. You've got a week to drool over this guitar online. I hopefully Patrick will post a couple of videos of himself playing it this week. Uh, you can definitely hear what it sounds like, but he's going to play it a little bit for us now. You have another song for us? Yeah, I could play some uh, popular song, Wildwood Flower. Let's do it. Let's see if it's in tune. It's very new. Yeah, that will do. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. You can win that guitar by entering at the link below. Please do that. We want you to win. Thank you very much for joining us, Patrick. It has been so awesome to hang out with you. I am so glad that we got the chance to meet in person, as close as we can get now anyway. If people want to check out your channel, what's your uh, YouTube URL? URL. Just search for Patrick S. Landgren. Yeah, that's cool. it. And subscribe, believe me, these lessons are awesome. He definitely has it dialed. Patrick, thank you again for joining us. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, check out all of our other videos, enter to win the guitar. We'll be back next week to announce the winner. Thank you, Patrick, we'll see you on the internet. Thank you.